misleading graphs, biases, and predictions. Okay, so let's talk about this just for a second. Misleading means that people produce data in magazines, on the sides of buses, on billboards, to purposely mislead people into tricking them into doing something. Like, most of it is to purchase something or to make their company look better than a different company. Um, biases are, com are, are complete biases that kind of um, skew the data a little bit, make people see it a little bit different. So um, an example of this is I think that my students are the smartest because I'm biased, I'm their teacher. My students might be the smartest, they might not be, but my bias is that they are because I'm their teacher. That's a bias. And predictions, you guys know what that is, using some type of data to predict something that is going to happen in the future. Um, so if the carnival sells a lot of elephant ears um, every year, then they can predict how many elephant ears they should be able to sell the next year at the carnival. So that would be misleading um, graphs, biases, and predictions. Okay, number one. Um, it says, determine if the graph below is valid. So valid means that there are no biases. You cannot find a bias in this and that it should be a legit graph. So let's talk about this, um, this d data display right here. It's a pie chart or a circle graph. And it's talking about favorite Thanksgiving foods of Pleasant Ridge, this, this middle school called Pleasant Ridge. And we've got all of these things that these kids have voted on. And this girl over here, Carrie... It says Carrie wanted to know her friend's favorite Thanksgiving foods. So she wants to know all of her friend's Thanksgiving foods. So she decided to ask all of the students in her first period math class. Okay, does that make sense? Her goal is to find her friend's favorite Thanksgiving foods. So she goes and asks a bunch of people in her first period math class. Unless all of her friends are in first period math, then there is a huge bias there. It's not going to be valid. Um, so my answer to this would be no. All friends aren't in her first period math class. Okay, so to make something valid, um, it, if it would, it, we're going to make it valid, it says Carrie wanted to know her friend's favorite Thanksgiving foods. And so to make it valid, it should say, so she went and asked all of her friends in all of her class periods what their favorite Thanksgiving meal would be. And that would be a valid display of data. Okay, you guys read your number one, read the prompt and see if that is valid. Number two, determine what is misleading about the graph. Okay, if you notice, your um, notes and this number two are identical. So you have to really listen and take some good notes on this and um, so you can have some good notes to study later. So misleading about the graph. Well, let's first start with these ticket prices right here. We have baseball game and basketball game. We have the price per ticket in 1991 for both and 2001 for both. Okay, so why would someone produce this data display right here? Well, if I'm just looking at this firsthand, do I want to be a baseball fan or a basketball fan? And I'm thinking for sure this is cheaper, so I would probably want to be a baseball fan. It doesn't look like the price has increased very much. Whereas in basketball, Lord have mercy, this used to be so cheap and now look how expensive each ticket is. But that's not really true, so let's kind of break it down a little bit. So what I have here in 1991, the price per ticket for baseball was 10 bucks, and in 2001, 10 years later, it jumped to 20, so it doubled. In 1991, a price per um, ticket for basketball, I'm just going to see that this is about, let's say, $23, and then 10 years later, it jumped to 50. Okay, well, 50 cut in half is 25, so this just about doubled just like this doubled. But because of spatial reasoning and how your brain interprets this, I could fit how many of these basketballs in here? I'm going to say, geez, at least five. It looks like it, it multiplied by five, but it didn't. It only multiplied by a little over two, just like these. So um, what's misleading about this is the size of the pictures um, makes it look like, makes it appear 
the price increase is much larger than it is. Okay, over here to our next data display, um, we have improper scaling and regular. So now you can see a side-by-side -side example of why people do this. So um, right here is one, and this huge B, whatever this represents, is three. So it went from one to three. But imagine, just like I did with the basketballs, this little guy, how many of those little guys could I fit in the volume, or I'm sorry, the area that this bigger guy takes up? It looks like it is multiplied by six, but really it's only multiplied by three. Whereas on the regular graph, you can see that this little guy represents one, and over here on B, all he did was triple. And it's very easy to tell. So misleading, again, is the pictures that they chose to use are misleading us to think that the change is much greater than it really is. You guys take good notes on number two so that you can use these later. Number three, determine what is misleading about the graph. Okay, so your um, paper and this example are identical, so take really good notes on this. Okay, so what I see is this tiny little car represents 9 million. This twice as big truck represents also 9 million. And this massive semi truck also represents 9 million. This is totally not scaled proportionally because if I cut a line right here, this truck represents 9 million. Well, look how many trucks I have here. That's like 18 million. And then these cars, I have one, two, three, four. So that's really like nine times four. That's like 36 million cars right there. So visually, you look at this and you think, whoa, there are a lot of trucks out there when really there's not. Nine million in reference to the car would be right here. So the truck should only take up this much space. So the way that it is misleading, again, is the size of the pictures being used. Okay, so the size of the pictures being used is going to make us think that um, these are all equal right here when really they are not. You guys um, take good notes on your number three. Okay, I don't know what happened to number four, but we are already on number five. It says determine why the graph is misleading. So we've got battery life, and we're comparing three different types of batteries. We've got Rayomax, Duracell, and Energizer. And just looking at this, just straight off the bat, we have Energizer clearly is kicking butt in battery life on this data display. But look more carefully. Is this zero right here? Does this start at zero? Because look at this, this is 2.25 and this is 2.35, a very, very, very small increase right here. So that means this right here is also the same small increase. So I could actually label this as 2.15. It is not at all starting at zero. So imagine, and I'm gonna try to do this, if I stretched this down, all the way down, and I drew these boxes all the way out to where they were starting at zero, and now let's say this is zero, is the difference between these batteries even that great of a difference? Now, if they all were this long, this guy's difference would still be a difference, so I would still argue that Energizer is the best, but it's not as massive as it appears to be. So what's misleading is that the graph does not start at zero. And when graphs don't start at zero and they only chop off the very edge or the very end of the graph, they are trying to make it look like the difference between each brand is much, much bigger than it really is. Okay, you guys take good notes and apply this to your number five. Number six, why is this misleading? Okay, let's look at this graph. We've got hours spent on homework. We've got time used, hours per week, and grade. So we've got pre-K to K, first to third, fourth to sixth, seventh to eighth, and nine to 12. Okay, there's a whole bunch of things wrong with this. The easiest one to see right off the bat is this right here. Look at these intervals. So we have zero, so, so far so good. And then it goes up half an hour, 
and then a half an hour. So far, so good. And then it jumps to two hours, but the space is still the same. And then we've got two hours and then just a half an hour, just a half an hour, and then two hours and another two hours. So the intervals are not equal. So the first thing we want to write down is intervals are not equal. which is a huge problem with any kind of graph. And then down here, I also want you to notice, pre-K to K represents two grades. First to third represents three grades. Fourth to sixth represents three grades. Seventh to eighth only represents two grades. And nine to 12 represents all four years of high school. So this is absolutely crazy in the way that they've broken this down as well. So intervals are not equal on either end. Um, you guys take really good notes on this. Whenever intervals are not equal, it is always going to be a misleading graph. They're trying to make it seem as it is not. You guys take good notes on your number six. Number seven, a survey concluded that 62% of the students eat a snack as soon as they get home after school. If Jordan Middle School has 1,400 students, how many students have an after school snack each day? So this is a prediction. So it is a proportion as usual, and I have parts and I have holes. So my key is gonna be part over whole equals percent over 100, and my empty proportion set. Okay, I have a 62%, that is always gonna go over 100, and the total amount of kids that get home and go to Jordan Middle School is gonna be 1,400, and I'm looking for the part that eats a snack. So I'm gonna cross multiply and divide. 100 times x is 100x, and 62 times 1,400 is 86800. Zero, zero. To get x by himself, I'm going to divide each side by 100. And to make my life easy, I'm going to reduce these two zeros. And I'm going to get 868 students come home every day and eat a snack. You guys apply this to your number seven. Number eight. 8 out of 26 freshmen know what college they want to attend. Out of 856 freshmen, how many have decided on a college? Okay, so this is another prediction. I've got parts and I've got holes, but it has nothing to do with percent. So I'm not going to set up part over whole equals percent over 100. I'm going to set up a key that talks about the two things that I know. So I have people who know what college they want to attend, and the total amount of freshmen. So I'm going to say no at the top, like they know which college they want, and I'm comparing that to the total amount of kids that are in college. And then I'm going to set up my empty proportion set. Okay, so the first fraction, and this is weeks ago, so you really have to remember, the first fraction is what I know. So I know that eight kids know where they want to go, and there are 26 total freshmen. So eight out of 26 know where they want to go or what, um, what college they want to attend. Okay, and then I have out of 856 freshmen, how many have decided on a college? Okay, so I do not know how many kids have decided on a college, but I do know the total amount of freshmen are 856. So now I'm going to cross multiply and divide. 8 times 856 is going to give me 6,848. And x times 26 is 26x. To get x by himself, we're going to divide each side by 26. And I am going to get 263.38. Okay, so these are people we're talking about. So I'm going to say about 263 students know where they want to go for college by their freshman year. You guys apply this to your number eight. Okay, y'all, sing this central tendency song to receive homework time in class. I have to hear you see, hear you sing it before you're going to get your homework today. So hurry up, practice, and let me hear you. <laughs> 